Hello friends, the topic for this video is thoracic duct. You may be asked a short note on thoracic duct in your exams or you could be asked to enumerate the areas or regions of the body drained or not drained by thoracic duct. You can also be asked a structured question like describe thoracic duct under the following headings origin, course and termination, its tributaries, the areas drained by thoracic duct and its tributaries and the applied aspect. To answer this we have to begin with introduction. So first of all what exactly is thoracic duct? It is a lymph duct or lymphatic duct. In fact it is the largest lymph duct. It drains limb from most of the parts of the body. How does it appear? It has beaded appearance because of the presence of valves. So it is provided with valves because the flow in the thoracic duct of lymph is against the gravity when the person is in upright position. To prevent the back flow of the lymph, it is provided with valves. Lymph in the thoracic duct has got milky white appearance because of the presence of chyle, which is nothing but fat digestion products are there which are known as chylomicrons and they reach thoracic duct from the intestinal lymph vessels which absorb the fat byproducts. The length of thoracic duct is 45 centimeter approximately and the diameter is half a centimeter. Now let us look at the origin and course of the lymphatic duct uh, sorry the thoracic duct. Thoracic duct begins in the abdomen at the upper end of a dilated lymph sac which is known as cisterna chyli and it begins at which vertebral level at the level of T12 after that thoracic duct passes through aortic opening in the diaphragm and there are three structures which pass through this aortic opening these are the azygous vein on the right of the thoracic duct and the aorta descending aorta which is on the left of the thoracic duct. So all these three structures they will pass through the aortic opening and reach the thoracic cavity. Now thoracic duct is going to run in the posterior mediastinum between azygous vein on the right and the descending aorta on the left. It ascends till which vertebral level till the junction of T4 and T5. So here at the upper border of the T5 it crosses towards the opposite side that is towards the left side and now ascends up in the superior mediastinum to the left of the esophagus. Then it passes through the thoracic inlet to reach the root of the neck. Now it turns laterally and here it lies behind the carotid sheath. One of the structure present in the carotid sheath is the internal jugular vein. So it passes behind the carotid sheath and opens at the junction of left internal jugular vein and left subclavian vein. Let's again see the course of uh, the thoracic duct. So thoracic duct begins at the upper end of cisterna chyli. What is the cisterna chyli? This is a dilated lymph sac which is present in the abdomen. And at which vertebral level? It starts at the T12 vertebral level. Now it enters posterior mediastinum by passing through aortic opening of diaphragm between the azygous vein and the descending aorta. After this, it ascends up in the posterior mediastinum on the right side of median plane that we have seen. Now it crosses from right to left side behind the esophagus and in front of the upper border of fifth thoracic vertebra. So here it passes behind the esophagus and at this level T4-T5 level it is going to cross to the left side. Then ascends in the superior mediastinum along the left of the esophagus which can be seen here and then passes through the inlet of thorax and enters the root of the neck. It is now in the root of the neck. And finally, in the neck, it curves laterally in front of the vertebral vessels will be behind this and the carotid sheath will be in front of the thoracic duct. 
let us look at the termination i have already told you how does it terminate where exactly it terminates you can see here this green beaded structure this is the thoracic duct and where is it terminating it is terminating at the junction of left internal jugular vein and left subclavian vein so we can see here these two veins forming the left brachiocephalic vein this is right brachiocephalic vein and they are forming the superior vena cava so termination of thoracic duct is where at the junction of left internal jugular and the left subclavian veins now let us look at the tributaries of the thoracic duct so let us first see the cisterna cavi tributaries because this limb will also go into the thoracic duct so these are not the direct tributaries of thoracic duct these are the tributaries of cisterna cavi not of thoracic duct so cisterna cavi receives limb from intestinal lymph trunk right from the git it will receive and two lumbar lymph trunks right this will receive from the um, abdominal wall also and from the lower limb also right so the the whole of the limb from the lower half of the body that is below the diaphragm most of it right that will enter into the cisterna cavi now tributaries of thoracic duct right so it receives limb from left posterior intercostal lymph nodes right because the right will not drain into this so left posterior intercostal lymph nodes from there it will receive then it will receive three trunks right first is left bronchomediastinal trunk right so left bronchomediastinal trunk this will drain lymph from the lungs and from the mediastinum so from the mediastinum first the lymph node will be in the mediastinal lymph nodes and then they will join the uh, trunk which is coming from the lungs the lymphatic vessels coming from the uh, lung and they will join to form bronchomediastinal trunk so this is the one which you can see so left one then the left jugular trunk this is the left jugular trunk and this will bring the limb from head and neck region right and then we also have left subclavian trunk which will drain limb from left upper limb right so left thorax thorax left bronchomediastinal trunk and the posterior intercostal lymph nodes then left jugular trunk from the left head and neck region and left subclavian trunk from the left upper limb and from the lower half of the body the lymph is coming to cisterna cavi which again goes where it also goes into the thoracic duct so let us look at the areas drained by the thoracic duct so you can see here the light green area this is the area drained by thoracic duct and this is what is drained by the right lymphatic duct the dark one which you see here so all parts of body below the diaphragm they will drain into this then left half of thorax left upper limb and left half of head and neck right so these are the areas which are drained by thoracic duct coming to applied aspect now there is a condition which is known as chylothorax right so uh, what happens here it results from lymphatic fluid which accumulates in the pleural cavity so what can be the cause cause is leakage from the thoracic duct right laceration of thoracic duct may occur during surgery of the lung right so now it will leak into the pleural cavity and the effusion which is present in the pleural cavity they can be identified as lymph because of the white and milky appearance as i said earlier it contains chyle which is nothing but triglycerides sides which are mainly in the form of chylomicrons thanks for listening and for watching and uh, please subscribe if you have not subscribed like and comment also and if you want the notes and uh, all important questions and answers then you can visit my website that is anatomyqa.com thanks a lot